Hey there everyone, this is Cloud Chief, and in today's video I'm bringing you Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and this video is pretty much giving you an introduction how to get started so you can start you know exploring really the open world because this is the starting area. So when you first start out you you won't really have any items you want to start picking up anything and everything that you can especially weapons and food. Weapons are breakable in this game, so you want to have as many weapons as you can, so if one breaks, you are good to go, and you want to have as much food so you can heal yourself. Uh, after going a little bit, you will uh, get this message, and at that point, there will be an indicator on your map. At that point, of course, we want to head to the waypoint on our map. Uh, make sure you are taking out any enemies that you run into at this point in the game You shouldn't have any difficulty taking out these enemies. They're pretty weak But you really want to take them out as they will drop various items that are useful They will drop bows arrows shields and other weapons. So definitely be trying to take them out Also pick up you know just their drops horns and other things because they will be useful for you later in the game um, you know, besides taking out the enemies, just keep heading to the waypoint. After you head and get to the waypoint, that's going to trigger the next event that will continue us onto the game. Uh, it's, this is actually pretty cool. Uh, once you get here, you'll put your Shiki plate in, and you'll get a nice, yeah, Shiki tower. You get a nice event as the tower rises. Now, these towers work pretty much like any other tower in an open world game that you've been to. You get there and it reveals a section of the map and it's another place that you can now fast travel to. So it's definitely good to unlock as many towers as you want, but in this video this is going to be the only tower you're going to hit. So now that we have a map of the plateau area, we can uh, start heading out to the next point which is four different shrines we're going to want to hit but before we start heading to the shrines we got to figure out where they are and that's one of the nice things about the tower because you're so high up we can actually mark points to go so you'll want to hit uh what is it r3 you push the your analog stick in and it'll give you this scope and you can now go ahead and mark different things so we want to go ahead and mark all four shrines in the area. So you'll look around and you'll see it's those like, you know, red glowing stones there. If you do clear a shrine, it'll end up changing to blue. Just to note. Um, you can also mark any, th any other point that you would have a, an interest of going to. But at this point, we really want to focus on the four shrines. But you see a tower you want to hit or just something that looks interesting, feel free to mark it on your map. And it shows up on your mini map and your main map. Uh, so it's really good. Once you get to the bottom of the tower, you will have this old man come up and he will tell you, you know, go check out this shrine. He'll also tell you that once you clear the shrine, he will give you a paraglider. Okay. So, once we go to the shrine right over the river that's right by the tower, uh, you'll enter here and we will actually get our first, uh, like, power-up, so to speak. Uh, this gives us the power of magnetism, which is really cool. It allows you to move pretty much any metallic objects um, and there are a lot of puzzles in this game that you know with a lot of metal objects and there's a lot of different things you can do with it uh, and this point it's pretty much just moving objects around and getting used to it all these early shrines are basically teaching you how to use the uh, powers so you move the plate in the beginning and that allows us to get out and then you can move these around to open a path once we uh, come in here, you'll run into a, a little enemy. Uh, make sure you just take him out. And then after he's taken out, well, we can continue on in the shrine. Also, they will drop, you know, like ancient items, screws and stuff. Make sure you want to pick them up. They're definitely useful. Uh, after that, you want to go ahead and move this plate. And that'll get us access to over here, which is pretty much done the shrine. And like I said, the other thing about magnetism, yep, we can actually, uh, you know, grab this chest. Grab the chest, pull it over to us, and go ahead and get the item out of it. Now to note, all these shrines have chests. 
uh, generally multiple chests. Uh, definitely take the time and try and get them as they can have very nice armor, shields, weapons, and even uh, you know high amounts of rupees. So once you finish the shrine, you'll find one of these monks. You talk to the monk and that actually completes the shrine and they will give you a spirit orb. You get four spirit orbs and you can trade it in for a heart container. Now that we're done and we're back out on the plateau, we're talking to the old man and he's basically going to say, I'm not going to give you the paraglider until you finish the rest of the shrines in the plateau. And he's going to tell us to go back to the tower and pretty much he's telling us to do that to show us how to mark. Uh, I told you earlier when we were already up there uh, just to make it easier, but it, he's going to go up and yeah, show us now how to mark objects. But we already have this, the shrines marked, so we can now head out to the next shrine. But at this point, you can see where they were all marked on the map. So now the next point we want to head to is the one that was yellow marked on uh, my map. Depending on the order that you mark them, it might not be the same colors. But uh, I recommend coming to you know this spot next. Once you get over here, uh, you will actually see these like big ancient machines just sitting here. You can go ahead and click them and get you know screws and other items out of it. But there is something else. Sometimes that these machines, as you're about to see, aren't just dead. You can see there's an active one here. Now this one doesn't move. You definitely want to be careful of moving ones, but there's none in this area. That's later in the game. But um. Pretty much these things will get a lock on you, and after they have a lock on you for, I don't know, seven seconds, it'll shoot a beam and it'll do high damage. At this point, it will one-shot you. So you definitely do not want to get sh uh, hit by one of these guys. So as long as you don't keep the lock on, like you break line of sight, uh, then it won't stay locked on and it won't shoot you and it'll have to restart its timer for its lock on before it will actually shoot. So we're going to sneak around behind over this side and just to sneak up to the shrine. It's pretty simple as you, as you can see he was looking for us and he didn't even target us there at the end so we snuck around behind hop up over the wall and now we are at the next shrine and this shrine has probably one of the coolest abilities in the game so once we go ahead and unlock it we can head in oh and I didn't mention before any shrine that you have visited and put your shiki plate to even if you haven't even completed it uh, you can fast travel to it uh, it will sh if you've gotten it well if you have not gotten the shrine it'll be uh, but somehow it's on your map it'll show up red if you get it, it'll end up being blue, but red in the center. And then once you complete it, the whole thing will be blue. So that way you can know whether you've actually cleared the shrine or you even have access so you can fast travel to it. Now that we're in, uh, we go ahead and get bombs. There, the cool thing about this is there are two different sets of bombs. There's one that's a sphere and one that's a cube. And you can use them for different situations. Obviously the sphere can roll and the cube does not. I can obviously roll if it gets kicked or if it's, you know, on a hill, it'll move. It kind of has what you would think, you know, gravity and properties. But the other nice thing about these bombs are they're each on their own separate timers. So you can have two bombs out. One thing to note though is, is say I pull a sphere bomb out and then put it somewhere and then I pull uh, a cube bomb out and put it somewhere. I can then detonate the cube bomb, but for me to detonate the sphere, I have to switch back to it in my menu. After that, you get to these points, and you just want to use those launchers to launch the bombs to break the blocks to finish uh, the shrine. Now that we've completed the shrine, we got our second spirit orb. So at this point, uh, instead of heading to the next shrine, we want to actually go ahead and farm some meat and you'll find out why in a second. So we're going to travel back to the other shrine so we can easily go in uh, this forest because there are a lot of animals to farm in here. 
So typically the boars are really good, but pretty much any animal at this point that you can find all should drop what we need, which is the raw meat. And we're gonna need that to actually cook in a bit. After you have some raw meat, I'm gonna go ahead and mark on the map here that that's the next point we wanna head to. So now we, as we're gonna fast travel to the Shrine of Resurrection so we can make our way over. Well, you'll see this little lake. We want to stop in here and get some bass. Uh, some Hyrulean bass is something else that we'll need. Also to note, these little guys are hidden all over the place. And there's different things that you can do to get them. In that case, you jump in that circle and he'll pop. Sometimes you can find them under rocks. Uh, there's all kinds of different little puzzles that you can find for these guys. And you definitely want to find as many of them as you can. They will actually give you a seed for each one that you find. And then later you can actually trade that seed in, those seeds in for like more weapon slots, uh, shield slots, etc. So after that, we want to head over to this house that we had marked on the map. So now that we have all the ingredients, we have the raw meat, we have some bass, and then we have the spices, we can go ahead and make the meal that we want. Uh, this book pretty much just gives us clues on the recipe that we're going to make. So now we're going to go ahead and make it. So we use the meat, the fish, and the spices, you can go ahead and cook it, and that's going to make our meal up. Uh, after that, if it's during the day, you're going to want to go ahead and click the uh, the cooking thing and let it be nighttime, because then the old man will come by. At that point, you'll go ahead and uh, you know tell him, "Yay, hey, look, I cooked something." And once he uh, has some of it, uh, he'll go ahead and give you the warm doublet, which is something that you definitely want. Also, to note, you will not lose the dish. So you like gave him in to eat it, but you still get to keep it yourself to eat which is definitely cool and now he gives us the warm doublet this allows us so that way uh, we won't take damage in cold environments so now we want to head to the next shrine so when we head over here you'll see a big pit just go ahead and line up where you want to chop down the tree chop down the tree and then traverse that and then we'll come over here make our way climbing up the mountain once we made up to the mountain we are now to the third shrine and this shrine gives us probably one of the coolest abilities in the game. This is my personal favorite, and this is stasis. What stasis allows you to do is it allows you to stop an object. When you stop an object, it'll sit in place for a few seconds. So it allows you the ability to move around. Ideally for this, it we would want it to have stopped the uh, rolling ball once it's moved past so that way we can run up but you can make it without uh, stasis thing it's pretty easy but ideally would be to stop it you know after it's rolled past so that way it's you know the next boulder isn't gonna come for a while so then after that you can run up past here to get the chest and like I said definitely try and get as many chests as you can in shrines and then we'll head back over here and now we'll be able to see one of the other abilities that stasis does so after you uh free something you can go ahead and now hit the object the more you hit it the more force and the further it'll fly when stasis runs out and you'll also see the arrow in the direction it's going uh basically the last hit that's received on it will uh determine the direction now that we're done with that shrine, we want to head to start making our way to the last shrine. And I marked the place on the map. That's probably from this shrine the best place to head to to make our way over to the last shrine. So now that we are pretty much there, just to note, there is a little uh, goblin camp close by. Again, we want to try and take out you know any monsters that you find at this point just so that way we can get more uh, items and weapons and stuff bombs are also yeah I never didn't talk about it before with bombs bombs can do damage to enemies and so using bombs to fight uh, enemies is definitely a strategy worth doing especially since you have unlimited bombs so if you end up 
having to run out of arrows and all your weapons break, you can still take out the enemies with bombs. So as long as you have bombs, you at least always have weapons at your disposal. So feel free to use them. Uh, once we get close to the lake and the waterfall, you'll want to climb up at this spot. Once we climb up over here, we can actually loop around to the left. Yeah, where I have it indicated on the map there. We can loop around to the left behind the waterfall and then make our, you know, final run to the last shrine. So at this point, yeah, we're just going to make a beeline for the last shrine. Just to note about all these different power-ups and upgrades that we get, later in the game, you can actually get them upgraded. Uh, bombs, they'll have a lesser cooldown. Uh, magnetism, I think it has a further range. Um, the stasis, you can actually freeze enemies, and I don't remember what the plus uh, freeze ability does, which was what we're about to get, but... I'll talk about the abilities that you can do with freeze. When you're coming up this hill, make note that you want to watch out for those uh, rolling snowballs. You definitely don't want to get hit by them. Uh, after that, you can either take out these enemies or you can go ahead and try and just run past them to get to the shrine. But I think it's worth taking these enemies out. You get some, uh, you know, nice food, a little seared steak there. I think went ahead and, you know, popped their steak, but there's a you know, steak right there. So now go ahead and make our way up. And now we are at the final shrine. And like I said, this shrine gives us uh, the ability of freeze. Now to note, this ability only works with water. If you don't have any water, you can't make any ice blocks. So, but anywhere where there's water, you can make ice blocks. And there's a couple different things you can do with these ice blocks. Like one, yeah, you can use it to push up objects. It's also good uh, later in the game, you'll find uh, chests in the water and you can, you know, lift them up out of the water with uh, the ice blocks. You can also, if you, you can traverse water just by keep making ice blocks. But to note, you have to be in a standing position. You can't be swimming and make ice blocks. You have to at least be standing. But you can make ice blocks and keep using it. Also, to note, there are only three ice blocks that you can make. Uh, if you make a fourth ice block, the uh, first one will disappear. So, and then if you saw a second ago, I used the ice block to actually lift the platform so it makes a nice ramp to make it up. And then use ice blocks so we can get the chest. Because we definitely want to make sure we get as many chests as possible. And then there we go. We are done the last shrine. But yet we are still not completely done. We're almost there. So after you finish the last shrine, you'll have the old man come in. And he'll say that he wants to meet you somewhere. So at that point, we are going to, he will mark it on your map. Or you're saying imagine uh, X on your map. Pretty much we want to go back to the Shrine of Resurrection. Because that will put us out near where we want it to go. Um, the place where he's telling us to go I think is the Temple of Time. So that big cathedral right there. So at that point we want to you know, run out and make a beeline for that. Now there's going to be two things that we're going to get here. One, in the Shrine, there is a goddess statue that you can talk to and you can turn in your four spirit orbs for one either a heart container or two a stamina tank so i highly recommend at this point getting some hearts up just so you have some more survivability but obviously take whatever you think is going to work best for you but i think getting a few hearts first then getting stamina is definitely the way to go once you're done getting your heart container you're going to want to go ahead and you'll go out to the left here and you'll see a ladder. We'll be doing that in a second. You'll climb up the ladder and you'll find the old man there. There will be a little reveal with talking uh, 
with him, plus then he will finally give you the paraglider. And with that, that basically concludes, you know, getting started with this. Once you've hit this point, you can pretty much now start exploring and go wherever you want. You have all the tools to do it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got some value out of it. If you did, go ahead and hit the like button. And may you have success in all you do.